I want to preface this video by making it clear that I am not a professional critique or a literary analyst of any sort. I'm just a fan of anime and manga and everything in this video is simply my interpretation based on countless discussions with people within the community. The term character development has been a point of contention within anime and manga communities for a very long time, given the term's abstract nature and the different definitions for the term development. Character development, character progression. I see these two terms heavily debated. A lot of people consider them the same thing, a lot of people misuse them, and a lot of people don't really understand them. Like I said in the disclaimer, these are fairly abstract terms and I can see them being applied in various different ways. What matters isn't the term itself, but what you mean when you're using it. To make things simpler, I'll give you my definitions of these two terms. Character development is the process through which the author fleshes out a character and the audience learns more about them. It's a very broad process and practically everything that adds to a character can be considered development. Learning about how a character reacts to certain situations, how they became who they are today through a flashback, learning their mannerisms, how they treat people, their ideals, their personality, virtually everything surrounding a character can be considered development. This process makes these characters feel like three-dimensional people with complexity, personality, depth and texture. I can't consider a character good if they aren't well developed by the author because without sufficient development, they're gonna feel bland, uninspired and feel like tools to drive the narrative rather than actual three-dimensional characters. Now let's take a look at character progression, or what many people refer to as character growth. This is the process through which a character changes or grows due to the events in a story. This progression doesn't necessarily have to be positive. We can see a character go through a downward spiral of negative growth and change from the good guy into the bad guy of the story, and that can still be considered character progression. Some people may refer to that as regression, but it's still a process through which a character changes. Unlike development, I don't consider this a necessity when it comes to character writing. Sure, character changing due to the events in a story can be absolutely fantastic, and many of my favourite characters across fiction are these dynamic characters that have changed a lot, and their progressions are fundamental reasons as to why I love them so much, but it still isn't necessary. The character doesn't need to change to be good. Depending on the scope of the story itself and the themes the writer is trying to convey, they don't need to grow. And that is why static characters exist. They are the type of characters who do not undergo that significant change that dynamic characters do. Think Goku, Gintoki, Griffith, Sherlock Holmes, or Luffy who I'll be focusing on later. These characters might have slight changes over the course of the story, but they're generally the same person throughout. A dynamic character is the character that goes through that significant change. Think Guts, Walter White, Rick Grimes and characters like that. Characters who have changed immensely since the start of the story. In order for a character to be considered dynamic, they have to go through the process of character progression, which I just described. Now let's tie this to the main point of this video. The reason I even wanted to discuss this topic of severe contention within anime and manga communities is because I very commonly hear that Luffy has no character development. This is used as a criticism for his character, and the reason why people say this is because Luffy has no real significant change. He is, for the most part, the same person he was in the first few chapters of One Piece, and this is a manga that's currently at over a thousand chapters. Now, if somebody said Luffy has no character growth, I wouldn't have any real issue with that, because it's mostly true. He does have some very minor instances of growth and reflection, but he is supposed to be a static character. Change isn't necessary for him. Character progression wouldn't fit the way he functions within the larger narrative of One Piece. Let's take a look at the first chapter of One Piece. This chapter establishes One Piece as a story about friendship, dreams, and freedom. And the experience Luffy goes through as a child in this first chapter establishes and shapes the person he's going to be for the rest of the manga. Luffy is a man who pursues absolute freedom. He dreams to become the Pirate King. He doesn't harbour any hatred for anybody, unless you hurt his friends, and he is for the most part a pretty simple character. His beliefs, dreams, moral values and personality have remained largely unchanged throughout One Piece, and this first chapter of the series is where you can see how these unshakable traits were born. 
Luffy gained his belief that pirates are men of freedom from his interactions with the red-haired pirates, and this is where his dream to become the Pirate King also stems from. If pirates are men of freedom, then the Pirate King who is the greatest must be the freest. It's a very simple thought process, but that's what makes it so powerful. As I said earlier, Luffy is a very simple man faced with complex trials in a multifaceted and layered world. The bulk of his growth or change happens in this first chapter. He initially held the belief that a real man should stand up and fight for himself no matter what, and after seeing how Shanks didn't bother with a needless confrontation and only fought when his friends were at harm, Luffy grew and changed this initial belief. That's why in Jaya we get a callback to that first chapter, and Luffy doesn't waste his time on a needless fight against the Bellamy pirates, only fighting Bellamy when his friend was disrespected and robbed. There are even more things you can discuss in this very first chapter, but this video isn't supposed to be a breakdown of Luffy's character, but a look at his development, mainly proving that he has development, so I'll be moving on. I personally consider a well-developed character to be a character who you can put in virtually any situation and comfortably determine how they would react. Now, there are some instances where a character is fantastically developed and you can't make an easy decision because of that character's complexity, but that's a different discussion. With a character as simple as Luffy, I think you could put him in literally any situation and determine how he would react fairly easily. If you put Luffy in a situation where he is forced to choose between his friends or his dream to become the Pirate King, what do you think he will choose? It's pretty much undeniable that he will choose his friends without even needing to think about it because he has already done so countless times. Whenever Luffy puts his life on the line, he is putting his dreams on the line too. If he dies, he can't become the Pirate King, so this is a question that's fairly easy to answer. When Ace died and Luffy had lost all purpose, the only thing Jinbei could do to uplift him and give his life some meaning is remind him of his nakama, or his comrades. We understand exactly the sort of person Luffy is and that's what makes him a well-developed character to me. All of this isn't to say that Luffy cannot grow later in the story. In fact, let's talk about Luffy for a bit and how he could potentially grow in the future of the story, and how he will definitely be more developed by the end of it. One aspect of Luffy that I want to focus on particularly is how he embodies freedom, and if his ideals and desire for absolute freedom will ever be challenged within the narrative. Perhaps his desire for having absolute freedom will backfire on him, and Oda will explore the negatives of having too much freedom. Freedom from law and other regulations that are necessary to any grounded society, whether it be the pirate crew Luffy captains or the world's entire government. There are benefits to an established civilization with rules, and there are extreme negatives to embodying absolute freedom. Being free to do literally anything gives you the ability to neglect a conscious moral standard and do anything without consequence. I think the perfect way for Oda to challenge Luffy's somewhat naive outlook and idealistic dream is to make him interact with Akainu in some way, preferably in a fight. The matchup between these two is very plausible and there are various things going for it. The way Luffy embodies absolute freedom and Akainu embodies absolute justice is a thematic clash that is begging for some spotlight. We know that Akainu takes this ideal to an absolute extreme and that he's a very evil individual, despite hiding behind the mask of law enforcement. It would be cool to see if Luffy's ideals are somewhat extremist too, and see him understand that absolute freedom has its negatives. This fight would ideally take place after Luffy is already established as the Pirate King, in a battle against the Marines and world government. There's even more going for this fight, such as the feelings Luffy harbours for Akainu. He hates him for being the man to kill his brother. This is a fight fueled by vengeance that can explore core themes of the story satisfying. And who wouldn't want to see the Pirate King face off against the Fleet Admiral? That is a dream matchup, the pinnacle of piracy facing off against the pinnacle of the Marines. If you guys have any interesting ideas about how Luffy can be forced to grow somehow and actually undergo a significant change in some aspect of his character, please feel free to share them in the comment section down below. Luffy has had various minor instances of growth where something about him has changed, but for the most part, he remains largely the same man he was when he first set sail from Fuchsia Village and shipwrecked. The same guy who was found in a barrel and beat the hell out of Alvida. One Piece is a story that champions Luffy. He's the guy we root for in every conflict because he's the kind of person the world needs. 
With chapter 968 and Odin's execution practically confirming that Luffy is the next Joy Boy who will open the gates of Wano and change the world, it feels like Oda is trying to present Luffy as some sort of messiah in some ways. The prophesied sovereign who Roger himself anticipates will surpass him. Somebody like this doesn't really need to change, and as cliche as this may sound, a character like Luffy changes the world around him and sticks true to their core. And I think this is a fitting character type for long-running series, but honestly, there is no good type of character. A static character like Luffy or a dynamic character like Guts from Berserk both excel in their positions for vastly different reasons. There are no guidelines to writing characters, and storytelling is a very interpretive concept. People consume things very differently to one another and may see things others do not. The main reason I've made this video is to share my interpretation on this very important aspect of character writing and do my best at dispelling the notion that Luffy is a bad character because he lacks character development. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I fully understand my poor upload rate and scheduling recently, but I intend to be a lot more consistent with my uploads from here on out, so please stay tuned for more. If you're new here, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I hope you have a great day. Peace.